name is Ronnie Horn. I'm the Washington County Ag agent here. And um, I'm new to the job. I started in August of last year. So um, I was approached about doing a demo in a producer's field dealing with some weeds that he had. Um, if you was to see this field last year, it was covered in hemlock and it was covered in cucklebur. Um, so we decided to come out here after talking to the producer and be able to help him with his issues. So after doing our test plots, we started in January and all the way up through June, um, we had opportunities to meet with the producer and make recommendations. And he's actually um, applied some of the information that we have given him. Um, he sprayed part of the field early with 2,4-D and has now come back with uh, Grazon P plus D. And as you can see now, uh, he has a very productive Bermuda field. And in the background earlier, you can see the cows out here grazing. So to me, this was a success in terms of going out to a producer's place, applying seven different chemicals and determining what will work, what won't work, and then the different cost of each. And it has been, to me, a very successful demo in terms of just helping a local producer. And then we also be able to take these results and help other people in the state. And um, in that way, it's just been very productive. I'm Blair Griffin. I'm the county extension agent in Johnson County. Uh, today we're evaluating one of our broadleaf forage herbicide demonstrations here in Washington County. Uh, we have this this test, we've replicated it at 34 locations throughout the state. We started last fall, a uh, product called DuraCore herbicide, received a license last fall, and so we hadn't had much of a chance to look at it, so we wanted to evaluate it on a, a large range of weeds and locations throughout the state. So we started up here, um, did a January application with it, came back with an April application, then we did, tested it in May and June, and. Um, what we've seen is we've compared it with all our standard herbicides like 2,4-D, metsulfuron, Grazon P plus D, and Grazon Next. Um, we've been very encouraged by what we've seen. It gives you some broad spectrum activity, a uh, wide range of timings. Um, it's worked out well in comparison with the other herbicides. These demonstrations, like I said, we've done them all over the state. We have an ongoing forage herbicide program. We've looked at grass control over the last two years, not root foxtail, broom sedge, uh, Johnson grass. So it's, it's in conjunction with a lot of our other tests. Johnny Gonzalez, County Extension Agent, Benton County, looking at some spray plots that we've put out in this demonstration. And this demonstration has shown what we've seen in other demonstrations that with a lot of weeds, when they're small, they're a small problem. And when they're big, they're a big problem. Two of the main weeds that we looked at in this demo were hemlock and cockleburr. I'm standing between two plots. We started putting out plots the middle of January, January 15th. The plots that I'm standing in weren't sprayed until May. You can see the remnants of the hemlock that's left in this plot that was sprayed with 2,4-D at a quart per acre. When we sprayed the same rate in January, the hemlock was completely erased preventing that shading that it does. It's also a poisonous plant, although poisonings are rare. The, the problem that we have in this part of the country is it just takes up so much space and suppresses that spring growth of forage. On the other side of me <clears throat> is a metsulfuron plot that at this late date did a nice job on the hemlock that you can see, and it did a wonderful job on the cucklebur. It just left the horse metal but a great product that's very, very cheap, not restricted, works great in a Bermuda setting, not gonna give this nice results in fescue or other grasses, but it's a great, great grass to use in Bermuda. But again, uh, and we've done this before, spraying in January, there are so many things that go on in the spring to be done on the farm that if we can get that spray done early, we prevent a lot of these things from happening and let us do something else then in April and May. We use seven different treatments, four different application dates, and there's a couple of superstars that I just wanted to look at here. This plot was sprayed January the 15th with 16 ounces of Duracore per acre. It's a new chemical, not restricted, don't need a license, but sprayed January 15th. It took out 100% of the hemlock, took out 100% of the horse nettle. It has allowed just a few cucklebur plants to come back in it but for a chemical that was sprayed seven months ago, 
it's done a pretty nice job of keeping this plot clean. Looking again at one of the superstar plots out of the spray demo. This plot was sprayed January 15th with one quart of Grazon P plus D per acre. Seven months ago, it took out 100% of the hemlock, it took out 100% of the horse nettle, and it's allowed only a few cucklebur plants to come back in. Pretty amazing results. We usually don't expect results, residual activity that long from Grazon P plus D. Now the question comes in, do I want residual activity that long or not? And that's something for each individual situation. Sometimes you do not want that much residual activity if you're getting ready to plant behind what you're spraying. But graze on P plus D, one quart per acre, sprayed January 15th. Did an amazing job out here for our application in this trial. I wanted to highlight it. The other good thing about the graze on P plus D it's a fairly old chemical. It's now sold under a couple of different names. Uh, the marketing has moved to some newer products that are on the shelf, and that's where the main marketing push is done. But this is a pretty cheap application here, a few dollars an acre, still does a really nice job with Grazon P plus D. It has some limitations uh, around trees and around water bodies, but it's a pretty nice chemical for the amount spent on it and still does a great job. Uh, one thing we want to mention today is, is that several of these herbicides like Grazon P plus D, Grazon Next, and even the Duracor, uh, they have what, what we call a hay and manure restriction on them. And, and what that is, is there are certain chemicals in those herbicides that tend to stick around. They pass through the animals, end up in the manure, and also on your hay. So if you're using that manure or hay for compost, you can see herbicide activity that'll look like you sprayed your garden with that herbicide. So if you're buying manure from a, from a farmer or getting manure from someone or getting hay from someone, you need to ask that question because once it gets in your garden, it's not impossible to get rid of, but it does take time.